In this video, we will talk about how to use templates with numerical methods. We will look at how to write generic code for numerical algorithms and uh, we'll see that template functions can be helpful here. Another type of syntax is passing functions to other functions. A typical example is numerical integration. In this case, we integrate a function over a one-dimensional range. In a previous exercise, uh, we were asked to write code to approximate the normal CDF, or cumulative distribution function. By normal, we mean the Gaussian distribution, and um, that's a PDF, or probability density function, and it's Integral with respect to x is called the CDF or cumulative distribution function. We know that the integral from minus infinity to zero integrates to 0 0.5 by definition because uh, the, this function is even. So the integral from minus infinity to infinity has to be one because the total probability is one. So uh, that means the integral from minus infinity to zero is half the total probability, so it's 0 0.5. Um, and uh, the rest of the integral is from zero to x, and we have to calculate that numerically. And we did that using the trapezoidal rule. Now let's look at the trapezium rule, or trapezoidal rule. Um, a definite integral from a to b can be approximated by uh, the trapezium rule, which is a second order rule. For some positive integer n, uh, let's define the grid spacing h, which is b minus a divided by n. Uh, so that divides the range from a to b into n intervals. Each of them has a width h. We can look at this here. Each of those shapes here is a trapezium and we know from geometry how to approximate or how to actually calculate the area of a trapezoid or a trapezium. We know that the area is um, the small base, in this case that's f of k plus 1 plus the large base, in this case it's f of k, uh, times the height, h, of the trapezoid, divided by 2. So that's this formula right here. And uh, of course f of k is a times a plus k times h, and that's easy to see here. So for k equals 0 we get a, for k equals 1 we get h, then we get 2h, and so on. So the abscissa xk is equal to a plus kh, and similarly for xk plus 1. So we approximate the integral by adding up the area of each trapezium. So we add up all those little uh, shaded areas, the, the trapeziums. Uh, so that means we sum over k. Uh, from 0 to n minus 1. And if you look at this, uh, you see that each term here, this term will contribute twice. This term f of k plus 1 or f of k, f of xk will contribute twice, once for this interval and once for this interval. And similarly, f of k plus 1 will contribute twice, once for this area and once for this area. So all of these intermediate points f of xk will contribute twice except the first one and the last one which uh, will only contribute once so that picks up a factor of two which cancels out with this factor of two uh, but it doesn't cancel out for the first and last one when we add up all the intervals so that means this sum becomes the sum of uh, f of xk, uh, except the first point is f of a divided by 2, and the last point is f of b divided by 2. All other points 
uh, there were one over two cancels out with a two. So this formula is called the composite trapezoidal rule or composite trapezium rule. Okay, so this is a code for implementing the composite trapezium rule. Here we have a double function. We call it norm integ or a normal integral, for example. And the input is the double A and B, the beginning and end of the interval, uh, and the number of steps N, or actually the number of subintervals. Uh, then inside that function we calculate the step size b minus a over n and then we we calculate a sum uh, the sum starts with the contributions from a and b and uh, this norm pdf is the Gaussian distribution function, uh, this function phi that we presented here. Um, so that's this function e to the minus x squared over 2 times a normalization factor. Okay, so we evaluate the contribution at a and b and divide by 2, and then we calculate the sum of the remaining terms. Uh, these terms over here using a for loop and then after we sum over all of these terms we return uh, this quantity this sum times the step size h okay so this will return an approximation that's second order accurate in h for this integral now we would like to make this code more general. We would like to write code for this integration method that works with any function, not just the normal PDF. So I'd like to be able to pass a function as an argument, for example, uh, or some similar convenient way uh, of calling the trapezoidal rule and applying it to my problem without having to hard code that function inside the, this trapezoidal rule. Now, there there's more than one ways uh, to do this, which is often the case in C++. As I said, we can pass a function as an argument, or we can use templates. So for this example, the function we want to integrate will be of this form. So double function and then some argument constant double x. To pass this as an argument to a function, the syntax would be double trapezium, then all of the parameters here, double a, double b, integer n, and then the function double f with the type of argument constant double. We do not have to specify the name of the argument here. So here f is an arbitrary name that we use inside our trapezium function, just like a, b, and n. And then when we pass some particular function to the trapezium, uh, that function will be used for the calculations. We can then make use of this trapezium function for example, let's define some double function f1 uh, and another double function f2 with their arguments. Uh, these are one-dimensional mathematical functions. And then inside our main function, we can call the trapezium rule and integrate these functions. So here I can just say trapezium from a to b using n steps and apply that to f1 and that will integrate the function f1 from a to b using n steps and then i can use the same command but just replace f1 with f2 and then that will integrate the function f2 so 
that's a very convenient way to program, a very modular way to program. That means if I have a trapezium uh, program that integrates functions and it's fully debugged, then I don't need to debug it every time I use it. Uh, I can just pass a function to it and it will work every time. So that makes it very convenient to reuse code that we have written and we have debug debugged. And of course, uh, it allows us to just write the code once and not have to rewrite it uh, again and again for every function that we want to integrate. Now, all this is great, but there's one small drawback to this. With the preceding method, we can pass a function that takes one argument to the algorithm, but there is no way of supplying additional arguments to the function. For example, when integrating the normal PDF, uh, we use the standard normal PDF with a mean of zero and variance of one. But we may want to integrate the more general normal PDF. Uh, phi of x with parameters mean me and mean sigma for some other values of the mean and the variance. So let's look a bit at using an object. Last week we discussed objects in C++ and we mentioned that these can be of type struct or structure or class. An object can have member variables and member functions. So they could help here where we want to evaluate a function that depends on more than just its single input argument. So let's look at member function syntax. Let's use an example that we showed in an earlier lecture. The syntax for calling a member function is, is this. We have a structure, so a struct point, and inside that we have a member function that's called output. And that prints out the coordinates x, y, and z of a point on the screen the code for calling a member function of that structure point uh, was first we declare a point p and then we use p.output to access that member function inside that that struct now we want to simplify the syntax for calling a member function. In general, if the member function is of this form, first the return type, such as double, then we have the function name, and then the list of arguments in here, and then we define the function in the curly braces. We can change this member function to return type. Again, this could be double. And then instead of the function name, we just have operator, the command operator with round brackets or parentheses. And then the same argument list, and then in curly uh, braces, we define the function. So for example, here is a function object for the normal PDF. We can define a function object whose only purpose is to return the normal PDF uh, fee of x for arguments uh, or parameters uh, mean me and variance uh, sigma at a given value of x. So we define a struct or structure in our PDF. It has uh, some parameters inside it like me and sigma and so on. And then we want to define a function, uh, which is the Gaussian itself. Uh, but instead of defining a function here, we declare uh, a double operator. So the syntax is the same. We just replace the function name here with uh, the command operator and round brackets or uh, parentheses. 
and then inside here we define the constant p and we define this number z which is x minus the mean divided by sigma and then we return the Gaussian uh, normalized by this factor and uh, the exponential of minus z squared divided by 2. We can now put all of this together to modify the trapezium function so that it can accept function objects. Previously, we had a double trapezium function uh, with a constant double A, constant double B, constant integer N, and a double F, uh, which was uh, passed as an argument. We can now change this to a template. So we declare a template F, and then we use that template as input here. Um, when we declare the the trapezium, uh, the trapezium function. So uh, this is still a trapezium function, but it does not only accept functions. Now it can also accept function objects. Uh, and uh, here, instead of saying a double, we just say the, a different, a general type, uh, which is a template f. Now, in this template version, f can be anything that we can call with a double argument, uh, like f of x, and which returns a double value. This could be a function or a function object. The template trapezium function will work with either of those.